the network layer or layer three is very important to us as network engineers, as this is where routers reside. This layer is all about data delivery, where routers route data packets from one device to another. Cisco and other vendors also have what is called layer three switches. Layer three switches have router capabilities so that they can also route packets between VLANs within a network as an example. Routers or layer three devices choose or select the best path to deliver data based on the information provided by routing protocols such as OSPF or Open Shortest Path First or BGP or Border Gateway Protocol or ISIS or Intermediate System to Intermediate System. Those are three examples of routing protocols you may encounter. They use the logical addressing scheme of IP version 4 to determine the best path. So in an IP version 4 network, we have addresses such as 192.168.1.1 with a network mask of 255.255.255.0. The network mask informs devices that in this example, the first three octets are network and that's what writing decisions are made on. Please refer to the IP addressing videos for more detail about network and host portions of an IP address. So routers or layer three switches will determine the best path to route traffic based on criteria such as the cost or number of hops or bandwidth or longest match of a network address. So various criteria can be used to determine the best route. So as an example, OSPF determines the best path based on bandwidth. RIP or Writing Information Protocol, which is an older routing protocol, used hop count to determine the best path. But what's important to know is that routing decisions are based on the logical addressing format in IP version 4 or IP version 6. There's no reliability at the network layer. IP is not concerned with reliability and relies on the higher layer protocols such as TCP to provide reliability. Or if UDP is used, the application layer needs to provide the reliability if it's required. So as an example, when using TFTP, TFTP uses UDP at layer four and IP at layer three, but the TFTP application provides the reliability because there's no reliability in UDP or in IP. So IP does not provide any reliability or retransmission of packets. The network layer or layer three provides path determination and logical addressing. Layer two or the data link layer provides physical addressing and access to media. It is concerned with how data is formatted from upper layers for transmission over a given network technology. It is also concerned with how access to the network is controlled. An example is Ethernet, which uses a MAC address or media access control address. A MAC address is used as the identifier of a device. So on a network interface card or NIC, a MAC address is burnt in by the manufacturer. MAC addresses are 48 bits in length and they're broken up into two parts. We have what is called the organization unit identifier or OUI, and then a unique portion for this specific network card. MAC addresses should be unique. So the combination of vendor or OUI and a unique value should make the MAC address on a NIC unique. We'll spend some time later looking at this, but as an example, on my PC, I can use the command ipconfig forward slash all to view the MAC address of my network interface card. So notice, on my ethernet adapter, local area connection, I can see the physical address written in hexadecimal as follows. This portion identifies the vendor or OUI or organizational unit identifier. And this is a unique value assigned to the network interface card by the manufacturer. MAC addresses use a flat addressing scheme. Unlike IP, MAC addresses only consist of a vendor code and a unique value. When installing network cards, you don't need to ensure that network cards of a specific manufacturer are in a single subnet or a specific subnet. MAC addresses are part of a flat address structure, 
unlike IP version 4 or IP version 6 addresses, which have a logical addressing scheme typically assigned by a network engineer, and addresses are grouped into subnets and configured appropriately. You would ensure in IP version 4 addresses, as an example, that devices configured in the same subnet are in a specific portion of your network. You wouldn't put devices in the same subnet and then spread them across your topology. However, with MAC addresses, you could have HP or Dell laptops spread throughout your network. You don't have to ensure that MAC addresses are sequential or that they are in a specific order. This layer also provides error detection and in certain cases can correct errors that occur at the physical layer. When using Ethernet as an example, the data sent onto the network has to be formatted according to the rules of Ethernet. However, that data may traverse many links and at another point in the network, it may traverse a WAN link that's using point-to-point -point protocol or PPP. So the data link layer ensures that the data from higher layers is formatted correctly for transmission across individual physical links where the physical link characteristics may vary. One link may be Ethernet, another link may use PPP across a serial cable, another link may be using DSL.